Okay, okay, guys, so this is Mark Konikoff's rule. The way I remember the name is Mark Own I Koff. Just for, break it down to four little words so you can spell it correctly. This is Mark Konikoff's rule, and this basically talks about when you do the, well, it's not just the electrophilic addition of alkenes, but I'm going to apply it to that context today. When we do the electrophilic addition of alkenes, we get two possible products if we start with an unsymmetrical alkene. So for example, this is propene, this is unsymmetrical. This carbon here has two hydrogens, whereas this carbon has a hydrogen and a CH3. So uh, not symmetrical. We're also adding a non-symmetrical molecule here. Obviously hydrogen is not the same as Br. So this is when Makonikov's rule comes into place. If either one of these was symmetrical, it wouldn't matter because we would only end up with one product. As they're unsymmetrical, we're going to get a mixture of two different products. And this rule, Makonikov's rule, this talks about which will be your major product and which will be your minor product. So which product will you get more of? So just a little bit of a recap first. Let's go over the electrophilic addition mechanism. As bromine is more electronegative than hydrogen, this is going to get a negative dipole, and your hydrogen will get a positive. And then from this double bond here, we're going to donate a pair of electrons to the hydrogen to make a bond between a carbon and a hydrogen. And then this bond here breaks, and the electrons are given to the bromine. Remember, a curly arrow represents the movement of a pair of electrons. So, this bond has now broken, and the electrons have been given to the bromine to make bromide. So that will now have a negative charge, and no matter which way we go, we're going to end up with that. And this bond here has broken, the second bond, the pi bond, and one of these carbons has now made a bond with the hydrogen. And here's where the rule comes in, because we've got two possibilities. Either this carbon could have made the bond with the hydrogen, in which case we'll get that, and this carbon will now have a positive charge. I'm just going to put little circles around my charges. If you go to university, that's what they do anyway, to help distinguish them. Or my hydrogen could have made a bond with this carbon, and that carbon could have got the positive charge. Either which way, my lone pair of electrons on the bromide, in fact, let's draw that on the other side, on the bromide, sometimes the position is quite important. That's why I always draw this HBr coming from directly underneath. So do, when you're copying this out, try and draw it with molecules in the same positions. And this is going to go to the carbocation there, and then equally at the same there, from between the lone pair to that carbocation there, and that's going to give us our products, H on here, and Br there, or Br here, and H there. So which is the major product, and which is the minor one? Well, my Kalmanikov's rule says this. If you end up with your positive charge at the end of the chain here, where the positively charged carbon has only got one carbon group next to it, this will be less stable than if your positively charged carbon has two carbons bonded to it. And the reason for that is this. These carbons can give, they can donate a little bit of electron density towards an adjacent carbon, a carbon next door. So you wouldn't draw this on your Don Crosta, on your um, Kelly arrow mechanism, but this carbon here can give some electron density to that carbon. This carbon at the, at the top can do the same. And that's going to make this positively charged slightly less. And that's going to make this molecule a bit more stable. So this molecule is fairly stable because this positive charge is being cancelled out a little bit by these two adjacent carbons. In here, where we've got the positive charge at the end of the chain, we've only got one carbon adjacent next door. So only one of these carbons can give some of its electron density to cancel out the positive charge. So this positive charge is not cancelled out as much as this one. Yeah. None of them are cancelled out altogether, but this one at least is cancelled out a little bit more. So this is more stable, that is less stable. 
So if this is more stable, it's going to hang around for longer and you're going to end up with more of this product. So this would be our major product. This here would be our minor product. Okay. If I had, let's switch this round now, let's say I had a carbocation which looked like this. where the positive charge was on a carbon with three carbons adjacent, have a little think, try and make a prediction. Do you think this would be a fairly stable ion, or do you think this would be a very unstable ion? Well, it would actually be fairly stable. Certainly compared to these two, this would be the most stable, because it's got three carbons which can give some of our electron density to can not cancel out fully, but to at least partially cancel out this charge. Okay. So if you want to know which of your carbocations is going to lead to your major product, look at the positive charge and pick the one which has the most adjacent carbons. This has got two adjacent carbons, that's only got one, so this will be more stable than that, so this will be the major product. And that's my Konikos rule.